Tenatato Katoa, good evening. The weather smashed Auckland on Friday, worse than anyone predicted and worse than it ever had before. Now Aucklanders have been warned they could be in for another round tonight with an orange heavy rain warning south of Orewa from 8pm. But there are red warnings too, which are the worst. One is in place already from north of Orewa to the top of the country. And two more will come into effect later tonight for the Coromandel at 10pm and the Western Bay of Plenty from 3am. We begin our coverage in Auckland with Lauren Hendrickson. And then, yeah, that's where it was well over head height. Dylan Ma now knows firsthand how quickly this street in Sunny Nook can flood. There was about four or five of us and we were floating people out on. We got one lady who was in a wheelchair, we got her out on a surfboard. That lady was one of three people he helped rescue as his road turned into a river. For partner Lauren Coffey, the shock of it all is still sinking in. Really hard to process, kind of just, you know, it all happened so fast and I, I'm still going, what actually happened? Like, it doesn't seem real. It's got them both on edge as they wait for the heavy rain to return. All our passports and that are in a bag ready to go. Any kind of rain that starts falling, I'm just... Like, I'm scared of it. Like, honestly, it was, it was such a scary situation, you know, neck deep water on our street. You don't have to travel far here to see the devastation. There are several yellow stickered houses on this street. Residents I spoke to aren't even going to attempt the cleanup because the rain just keeps on coming. Instead, they've come to rescue as many irreplaceable items like photos. Dan T-Bone's friend's house was one of the hardest hit here and is a complete write-off along with their cars. You just can't imagine that the water is this deep. But this waterline serves as a reminder of just how dangerous this weather can be. Floodwaters are always scary because they're just a force of nature. Um, we kind of just wait and see what happens. It's that force of nature Auckland Council is closely monitoring. It manages half a million trees across the city, with saturated soil now a big issue. Unfortunately, failure like that where a tree falls because of the land saturation, I, it's nearly impossible to predict that a tree is going to fall. It's unpredictable situations like this which have officials on high alert. And shallow floodwaters can be incredibly dangerous and people really need to take care. Making sure everyone is prepared for whatever this weather may bring. OK, Lauren, so what are the main messages for Aucklanders tonight? Well, Mike, first and foremost, to take these warnings seriously. That orange heavy rain warning south of Orewa is in place until 10 a.m. tomorrow. And while uh, the amount of rainfall predicted is not overly large, the warning is enforced because of localised heavier downpours uh, overnight. And as you heard in my story and you can see uh, behind me, the ground is already sodden and there's not many places this water can go. Now, Civil Defence is looking to set up extra evacuation centres. This time they'll potentially be in Walk. Walkworth, Wellsford and Coomew. And earlier, Auckland Council closed all non-essential community facilities early. They're also looking to open them later than usual tomorrow and they're urging the public to stay away from regional parks. Mike. Lauren Hendrickson, live for us at Auckland Domain. Thanks very much. Well, Heather is here now with more on the weather system. How is it tracking at the moment, Heather? Yeah, well, the rain has hit Northland and is tracking south. This is the last six hours of rain, with the heaviest still to come tonight. We've already recorded a northeast gust of 120 kilometres per hour this afternoon in Kaiowa. That, with wind, coupled with thunderstorms and downpours, will reach Bay of Plenty and the Waikato by dawn. Now, at the same time that this rain hits, eastern coastlines can expect large swells up to four metres, with high tide hitting in the early hours of the morning. More up after sport. Thanks very much. Well, Ashley Yates is in Kaitaia, where a preemptive state of emergency was declared for Northland earlier today. And Ashley, what's it like there now? Well, Mike, as you can see behind me, there is a little bit of flooding and there is a bit of light drizzle happening here in Kaitaia at the moment. But in terms of Northland as a whole, it remains relatively unscathed in terms of flooding. But there have been periods of really intense, heavy downpours right across Northland today. The Far North District Mayor, he says the worst isn't over, though, with more heavy rain expected across the region tonight. That heavy red rain warning, that remains in place until 4 a.m. to 
tomorrow as well as a severe thunderstorm watch that is also in place until four tomorrow morning. It's prompted that state of emergency to be declared for a period of seven days. Emergency alerts were sent to mobile phones right across the region to warn people of the state of emergency. Here's what the Far North District Council had to say. This morning the staff you know, indicated quite early that they thought that we need to level this up with a state of emergency for our entire region and we followed that advice through to ensure that we are as well prepared as we can be. The last thing I want to see is any loss of life. We'll hopefully not have to really use any of those powers that we're granting under the um, state of emergency for our region but I'd rather be here, sitting here, to say, do you know what, we didn't need it but at least we had it on standby. Also on standby is a number of evacuation centres right across Northland that could be stood up if people need shelter tonight if they've been evacuated from their homes. As a precaution, this afternoon around 85 residents at Claude Switzer Residential Care Facility, they were evacuated just in case the uh, river behind it breached its banks. They were evacuated to Kaitaia Hospital. Meanwhile, a number of roads remain closed in and around Northland. One of particular concern is the main route to the far north, that State Highway 1 between Brindirwin to Waipu. Waka Kotahi says that they've got crews working around the clock to try and get that key piece of highway open as soon as possible. But Mike, officials are warning people to stay off the roads and avoid unnecessary travel tonight. Absolutely good advice. Ashley Yates there live for us in Kaitaia. Thanks very much for the update. Well, the Auckland Super City's northern region is bracing for another battering. It's been dealt a red heavy rain warning and communities have been kicking into action. Zane Small has a story. This already sodden land is preparing for another deluge. We filmed this flooding on State Highway 16 heading north from Auckland CBD. Further north, just south of Wellsford, officials were hard at work clearing this slip. Auckland Emergency Management has issued a red heavy rain warning for the parts of Auckland north of Orewa, and that's expected to hit this evening. But here in Wellsford, the weather is already packing in. Keep an eye on that weather. Uh, if, if you're in an area where there is flood waters rapidly rising, there we go, it's working, the emergency alert has clearly been issued. Um, then, you know, take all care. Wellsford is still recovering from Friday's floods. Walkworth was hit too. The town was cut off on Friday, forcing stranded travellers to spend the night at the town hall. One of the things we're doing is standing up the, the Walkworth Town Hall as a uh, community hub, which is essentially pro providing a space where we can coordinate uh, resources and requests and look after our community. A generator was brought in in case the power goes out tonight. Uh, we've been coordinating... Um, all the people that have put their hand up to help. The town's Mahurangi River is already swollen. It's a similar picture at Orewa Beach, where the estuary is surging. And as the day draws to an end, these swells paint an ominous picture. Preparing for the storm tonight? Oh, I just going to um, make sure the windows and doors are closed, put anything outside away. The owners of this Oriwa Optics store are preparing for the worst and closed early today. So we've sent all the staff home, we've lifted all computers and equipment as much as we can off the ground and we're taking the server home. <laughs> Locking up, hoping for the best. Well, kia ora Zane. lots of preparations there today and it looks like Oriwa is really starting to feel the weather now. It certainly is. The wind is really picking up here at Oriwa Beach. You'll probably see behind me some massive swells coming in. Some curious locals have come down here to check it out. But with the weather warning in place until tomorrow morning, locals here are preparing for a turbulent night. Sam? I bet they are. Zane, thanks so much. A critical road in the Coromandel has washed away. State Highway 25A, which cuts across the peninsula, gave in over the weekend, leaving a gaping hole and a huge repair job. And with more heavy rain expected tonight, it's feared other roads could face the same fate. Mitch Redman reports. It's been a saturated summer for Thames Coromandel. Where has the sun gone? Everybody's saying that. We've been looking for it. I don't know. I don't know. It's gone. 
The sheer volume of rain surprising even the local mayor. We're looking at 1.3 metres really from the 1st of January uh, in our catchment area over the district, uh, which uh, between 1st of January and now, we would nor normally would take us until June, July to get that sort of rain. The worst of the weather is set to roll in this evening. However, State Highway 25A has already been lost. The road's actually given away. It's excavated down the hill and we're not able to get in there at the moment. We're dealing with the emergency response and we need to some drier weather so we can get our geotechnical guys up real close. Bent, battered and bruised, travel time is set to skyrocket with journeys across the peninsula taking an extra hour. That's bad news for businesses. There's some pretty major issues when SH25A is closed and that is a major route for the peninsula. Goldfields Shopping Centre in Thames is taking the unprecedented move to lock their doors tomorrow. The forecast, too much of a risk. Yeah, well, let's be safe rather than being sorry. So there's 22 shops in here, everything from, as you can see, from McDonald's through to the warehouse. So we've got quite a big range. So it does affect a lot of people. Retailers feeling frustrated and fed up. It's an absolute tragedy. You know, I spoke to uh, one of the business operators over at Fidiang the other day and he described it as COVID returned. It's been pretty horrific. We just need a break and we hope by the ne this coming weekend, which is a holiday as well, that um, things will improve dramatically. And locals are pitching in to get back to normal as soon as possible. <laughs> going to clear itself. Yeah, just had it in the back just in case with the way the weather's been, so it paid off. And they aren't letting the weather dampen their spirits. Summer hasn't arrived yet, so it must be coming. Thames is Thames, mate. Good as gold. <laughs> <laughs> high hopes for some high temperatures after a summer like no other. Mitch Redman, News Hub. Oh, Keith Aki Masalamani joins us now from Fitianga Beach. And Keith, what are the conditions like there right now? Mike, the gale force winds are well and truly setting in. The rain is just getting started and it's set to get a lot worse by 10 o'clock tonight. It's already prompted a lot of slips on the roads leading to the Coromandel and issued a stern warning from civil defence telling people to get off the roads and stay at home unless absolutely necessary. And they say if they are travelling to get somewhere safe by dark, they say that fire and emergency services are poised and ready to go as well. And if anyone is in a life-threatening situation tonight, to call 111. Mike. Kithki Masalami, live for us in Fatianga. Take care. Thanks very much.